we now turn our attention to option pricing and one of the mechanisms or one methods to use uh, which is used in option pricing is called the binomial model uh, as the name suggests it basically assumes that uh, there is sort of a discrete movement in the option prices and uh, underlying prices and based on that discrete movement you are basically going to define what is going to be the option price right so a particular stock could only take let's say two particular nodes at the end of a period and then this is like a one step uh, binomial tree and then you can have sub you know multiple of these uh, varieties that could be created we're going to discuss the one step binomial tree and try and understand how do we go about calculating the value of uh, of uh, the option using this particular scenario right to understand this let's first basically set up the entire uh, you know parameters or the the data points that we are going to use let's assume we have a stock that is priced at s not today so that's the spot price today and we are saying that there is one particular period which let's say is a one year period at the end of which the stock could either go to s u which stands for s upper uh, or it could go to a lower value which is called as s l or let's say s d s down right so s u is s up and s d is s down let's also assume there is a probability of the stock doing the same so there's a probability p with which the stock will go from s not to s u and obviously because we are assuming there is a discrete scenario and there are only two potential values that the stock can take the other probability must be 1 minus p right so either you have a probability of p which takes it to su or a probability of 1 minus p which takes you to sd correct now there are ways how we can actually identify what the probability would be but uh, we'll come to that in a minute now if you have a call option at this point of time and let's say we have a european call option at this point of time which has a strike let's say k and assuming k is you know between su and sd so basically the payoff here would be su minus k and there's a probability p that the payoff would be that and if we assume the strike at a price point which is between these two levels so take for example the stock peak at 100 today uh, su is let's say 120 sd is 80 and we assume strike is 110 then here at the lower level the payoff for call would be zero so basically one minus p into zero so that's my call value at the end of the first year if i basically find the present value of this entire term i should be able to derive what is going to be the value of the call option today correct so that's basically how a binomial model works now there are a few things that are interesting here that we may want to kind of introduce so i'm going to introduce the risk free rate r um, or let's say the risk free rate is rf and r is nothing but 1 plus the risk free rate right so that's what i'm going to introduce here now also assume that i'm going to define a number called uh, a parameter called u which is nothing but su by s naught in our example 1.2 and a parameter d which is nothing but sd by s naught we're trying to derive this probability now what we're trying to do is arrive at what is going to be this probability with which we can identify the call value using a given set of parameters right now what we would mean is that s naught growing at 1 plus r f right should give me either s u with a probability p or s d with a probability 1 minus p that's what should happen right note that 1 plus r f has been replaced by r so we'll change this equation to say this into r and remember s u is nothing but u into s naught right so i can write this as p u s naught 
correct? u is the factor by which I am multiplying s naught to get su plus 1 minus p and d into s naught, right? We can right away figure out that s naught is common. So I can, I can actually just remove s naught from all of this and try and solve the rest of the equation. So if you were to solve the rest of the equation, this would be r is equals to probability multiplied by the up factor plus 1 minus the probability into the down factor. Opening it up, I will get r is equals to probability into up factor plus down factor minus probability into down factor. I can take d on the other side, so that implies r minus d is equals to probability u minus d and that implies that my probability is going to be equal to r minus d divided by u minus d. Now this particular equation, if this is not you know very clear at this point of time, will become clearer as we go along. So I'm going to rewrite this probability is equals to r minus d upon u minus d. That's what we are defining as the probability at which we are coming, r being nothing but 1 plus rf, d being nothing but the down factor and u being nothing but the up factor. So that's how we derive the probability. Now we'll use some examples to basically arrive at this number. So let's assume we have a particular stock that is available with us and that stock is let's say at 100 today, that's the spot price today. The strike we use is 110 and then the upper uh, level we are expecting is, one point, uh, is 120. So U is 1.2 times the, uh, the spot. Uh, the lower level we are expecting is 80, so D is 0.8 and risk free rate is 8%, so I'm assuming R equal to 1.08. What do we think is going to be the probability? So the probability is remember R minus D divided by U minus D. That is 1.08 minus 0 0.8 divided by 1.2 minus 0 0.8. So that's 0 0.28 divided by 0 0.4. Uh, and that would basically be 70%. So that's my probability equation that we have calculated. Now note that the spot is here, you have a 70% chance of it going to 120, in which case your call option is worth 120 minus 110. Recall that the strike is 110, so the call is equal to 10 and it has the remaining chance of going to 80 at which point the call is worth 0, right, because it's going to expire worthless. So can I find out what is going to be the value of the call option at this point of time? So if I was to basically calculate a probability adjusted value, P into the call value at here, which is 10, plus 1 minus P into the call value here, which is 0. So I'm going to get probability, which is 70% into 10. So the value of the call option here should be 7 rupees. Right Now, if I were to discount it back to today, so the present value of the call option is going to be 7 divided by 1.08 and that's going to be my value today. Let's try and use an Excel file to calculate this. So that's the data that we have. We can arrive at the probability which is equal to R minus D divided by u minus d, sorry this should be b9, and so that's 0.7, my call value, so call value at s upper is going to be equal to 10, and my call value at s lower or s down is going to be 0. So I can just multiply the probability. So I'm going to get 
call value at expiry on a probability adjusted basis is going to be 0 0.7 multiplied by 10 the other term will become 0 and so PV of call is going to be 7 divided by 1.08 right so that's the present value of the call option we get 6 0.48148 right so that's basically the calculation we get 6.48 is the value that we arrive at in terms of what is going to be the call options value today that's one way of solving this equation there's another way of solving the same thing let's assume that you start with something interesting like uh, creating a portfolio where you are long delta shares and short B bond, right? Short some value of bond. Let's assume the value of bond that you're short is the amount that you're going to pay at the end, whatever that B is, right? Think of the payoff once again. So you have S naught here, which is 100. It could go to S upper, which is 120. And it could go to S lower, which is 80. Similarly, you have a call payoff, so which gives you the call value here of 10 and the call value here of 0, right? Now, we are saying that this long delta shares and short B bond is what is called as the replicating portfolio. We are assuming that this portfolio replicates the behavior of the call option, correct? If this portfolio replicates the behavior of the call option, then the portfolio should be equivalent to the call option at all points, whether it is at the upper point or at the lower point, right? So what we should get is delta into whatever the stock value is, SU minus B, which is the short B bond. And let's say we're short B divided by one plus R bond so that on the expiry point, it is going to give after one year B. So that's my payoff, right? At this point. And that's equivalent to 10 is what I'm saying. And delta dot minus B is equivalent to zero because this is a replicating portfolio. That's what we are identifying. Correct. So I can solve for this, which basically I can just subtract one from the other. So what we get is these two can be combined into a single equation that says delta SU minus delta SL lower is equal to 10. We know what SU is. So delta into 120 minus delta into 80 is equals to 10 or in other words 40 into delta is equals to 10 or delta is equals to 0 0.25 so what we realize here is that we are long 0.25 shares one fourth share we are long at this point of time that we have identified now i can just substitute that here to get the value of b or here to get the value of b so that's SL is 80, 80 into 0 0.25. This is what I'm using, minus B equal to zero. So B should be equal to 20, correct? I am basically paying the value 20 at the end of the period. That's what I had borrowed, correct? So I must have borrowed the present value of 20 and because this is a replicating portfolio, because this is a replic replicating portfolio, the long delta shares and short B bond B by one plus R, the present value of that should still be the same as the call option. The value of that today should be the same as the call option. So what is the number of shares I'm long? 0 0.25. And what is the value of the shares today? 100. So that's the value of the first part of my portfolio, this one, minus B, which is 20, divided by 1.08.
this should be the value of the call option as well because I'm assuming that these portfolios were replicating the call option values at the expiry. So they must be replicating the call option value today. Let's go to the Excel file and solve this as well. So I'm saying that I'm long delta shares and short B by one plus R bonds, right? We already identified that delta is going to be equal to 0 0.25. We have identified B is equals to 20. So the current value should be equivalent to, that's the value of the shares, which is 25. The value of the bonds today, bonds or PV of the bond today, is going to be equal to 20 divided by 1.08 and that's the shares and the difference should be equivalent to my call value. So 25 minus 18.41 and that value is exactly the same value as what we had seen earlier, right? So both these values are the same. So whatever method I end up using to evaluate this particular option, I'm going to arrive at the same value. And that's in a nutshell, the binomial model of option valuation. That's how you go about doing binomial value, uh, the, the binomial valuation in a particular option case. That's how you value the call option using this. That's it in this particular video.